Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the Jetty Jet Show. I'm Jetty Jet and today we're going to be painting Android 18 from Dragon Ball Z, aka best waifu of the show. We're going to paint her in a bold anime style. Um, what does that even mean? Basically, we're going to try to keep the spirit of Dragon Ball Z. If you guys know the show, they have really, really big and bold confident shapes. And we're going to try to retain that spirit and feel. So this month, uh, I wasn't going to actually do the Patreon because things were so hectic. Um, I'm going to be doing Anime Expo in next week with Ross and Cynics Designs at uh, Exhibitor's Booth Table 1630. So if you guys are out there, please come by, say hi. Things were just so hectic. I was trying to get my, my prints done, get the setup ready. There's just so much going on. And I just needed to take a big breath and I said, you know what, I gotta go back and just like pause all that print and stuff and just focus on my Patreon. Um, because I know that if I get this out of the way, um, I'll leave on a good note. And so please wish me luck and um, this is for you guys. Alright, so we're gonna start off with a basic skeleton structure, okay? It doesn't have to make too much sense. You're gonna use like kind of a rounded box for the rib cage and also some discs for the hips. And I'm also suggesting some shift in weight with the diagonal lines. Also, I want you to keep in mind that the distance between the head, the chest, and the the ribs, the, the pelvis, are all about the length of the head. All right, so remember, this is actually going to be the only sketch that we're going to do before we add in color. So we actually want to keep things nice and loose. This is the trick for getting that really organic look. If it's too tight, then adding the colors, you're going to feel like you have to adhere to the actual uh, shape. So we're going to keep it really nice and loose, and we're going to refine it as we go. And that's what really gives um, Dragon Ball Z that distinct appeal and style that it has. Um, shapes are really simple, really easy to understand. When you look at it from a distance, you can see exactly what they are. All right, let's talk about the color. So on, on the silhouette layer itself or on the layer above, you want to, any color that the character has, you want to pick it. It can be saturated, semi-saturated, it doesn't matter because we already have the blue underneath. Leave it semi-transparent and paint it in and then color pick it as you go to get that neutral, harmonized color. A multiply layer for shadows, so super simple. Um, it looks a little weird because I I ended up not recording um, this portion. It was on you. It was on YouTube live stream, and I missed this part. So I went ahead and re redid it, kind of a, the process to show you guys. But I'm using a dense watercolor brush, or in Photoshop, it's pretty much a brush that's kind of round, soft edge, and slightly transparent or light opacity. But the color you want to use is a reddish tone really light okay almost 80 percent um value and also like mid 42 percent for saturation um, you don't want to go too dark because if you do it's going to turn really black A little bit of shadow for the muscle of the of the neck muscle. We're gonna block in everything uh, hard edged, big and bold, and we're gonna blend them out and soften them up later. Uh, but for for now, just keep things nice and simple.
Alright, so notice, uh, mid-tones are distinctly different from the shadows uh, we put in that they cover kind of the large a empty areas where we didn't have any shadows. They're transparent, they go on lightly, and they give us a lot of depth and form. Um, so we're just going to go through and paint in the darker values and going back and forth between transparent brush and hard edge brushes to blend out the forms and shapes. We blend out harsh edges with a transparent brush or a blend tool. In this process, there aren't any lines that exist. We're, we're pretty much drawing lines over forms. So we're, we're being inspired by the forms and we're creating lines. Okay, so here I actually turned off the shadow layer because it gets distracting. So instead of blocking in all the shadows as well, I'm just going to cover up the, the holes just on the flat layer. And this is the layer we first established before. So looking for all those little blues, blending away all of those little gaps and holes. And sometimes um, cleaning up lines can be really difficult, you know, trying to put in details on top of lines. Sometimes the forms will look kind of broken or flat and um, just moving ahead and just painting in values really helps to, to create those compelling shapes and forms. Um, but now I'm using kind of a, an eraser brush, erasing out some of the shadows, painting in some of the shadows, cleaning up those edges. Um, there's a lot of patchiness, a lot of patchiness, so I'm going to take a really large soft round brush and just blending away a lot of those forms ever so subtly, just try to uh, retain some of those textures, but uh, we're going to soften up everything across and we're going to build up the, uh, the values back up from there. Um, so as you can see, it's getting slightly darker. We're adding a third level of depth to those shadows. Okay, so you can also be kind of liberal with it. You just add them in there and then if you keep it on another layer, you can always take a soft brush and just slightly airbrush it away, erase it out. Final little details like wrinkles and edges, it's great to cleaning up those edges to make those edges really nice and strong. Um, light right next to the shadow is a great way for creating those, those nice crisp, clean details. So again, for this I am using the transparent uh, watercolor brush, bringing out the darks and also adding more form shadows, um, softly brushing in soft brush, uh, form shadows for the jacket, uh, creating those nice peaks and valleys of wrinkles. around the, the rim of the character creating that nice form um, but 
uh, at this point, it looks like I'm settling with just the the nose area having some some um, rim lighting um, just from from behind, softly, just like a little bit on the hair here and there. Um, going over the whole figure, it does take away the attention, so I kind of do it around the head, on the collar. So yeah, the video is coming to an end. I hope you guys learned something. I had a lot of fun making it. Um, for the full, full version, uh, subscribe to my Patreon. You're going to get a lot more than this. Um, this is only like 30 to 40% of the entire video. I had to cut a lot out because I have to give something to my patrons. They are the ones who are really making this possible. So I will be at Anime Expo with... Cynics Design and Ross Draws. So you guys, uh, if you guys are going out there, please come by, say hi, give me a hug, kiss, everything, all that stuff, and uh, pick up a print for yourself. Um, we'll be at the Exhibitors booth, not Artist Alley. There's a difference. Exhibitors booth is for the big league, big boys. Uh, so we'll be in the back at table 1630. Write that down. Exhibitors booth, Artist Alley. And uh, for everybody who uh, stuck around this far, um, thank you so much and thank you guys patrons again big shout out um, and take care matter map boom faces <laughs>